morning and thanks for joining us on Dialogue, a program that engages topical issues and uh, top personalities uh, to discuss uh, uh, issues that affect our country, Nigeria. Uh, my name is Shafiu Suleiman. Uh, we apologize for starting slightly behind shadow. Uh, today on the platform, uh, we'll be looking at uh, the PMB's government and of course the quest for progressive development. And I will be doing this with uh, none other than a, a very staunch supporter of the Buhari administration, uh, the one that has been part of the journey for a very long time. He's a core Buharist, if you should uh, put it that way. His uh, political ideology is that of the Buharism. Uh, they believe in uh, the ideals and, of course, the leadership qualities of President Muhammad Buhari. I'm talking about Comrade Richard Teso Nenga. Uh, he is a political scientist and, of course, uh, a top APC chief ten. Uh, thank you for joining us on the platform. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to put issues in perspective, let me start with this uh, political and economic ideology called Buharism. <laughs> he started uh, long ago, yeah, during his uh, first coming, uh, during the military administration. Uh, it was termed an economic principle and the political ideology of a military-led government, uh, which was headed by General Muhammad Buhari from, 19, uh, from 31st December 1983 to 27 August 1985. This ideology shares common futures with Faxism. The government was a right-wing nationalist government that pursued Cooperatives, economic programs and curtail personal freedoms. Economic reforms were characterized as moving the political economy away from the control of a parasitic, in quote, elite, and into the control of an emerging productive class. Buharism represented a two-way struggle with external global capitalism with its internal agents and advocates. That was the origin of Buharism. Uh, it started long ago. Now he's coming as a civilian um, um, uh, president now after emerging uh, from the 2015 general elections and as the winner of that election. Buhari still carry out, um, I mean, uh, uh, part of this uh, ideology and, and implementing it and to, to get Nigeria to where he felt Nigeria should be. Now, let's Go back a little bit to look at uh, this components of uh, the, the Buharism we're talking about. What are the core values beyond what we had? You know, uh, what endeared you uh, with with this Buharism ideology? And First and foremost, a few things endeared me to PNB. Mm. At first, when he was the head of state in the mid 80s, he did very well. Mm. And I remember very well, mm. as a young man, anytime we were having any meal, mm. either lunch, breakfast, or dinner mm. with my father, mm. you know, in our culture, when you are eating with elders, they share meat equally among the children. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I was always complaining. My father had a friend mm -hmm. whose name was Mr. Kalu. So Mr. Kalu used to call me a dear bomb. <laughs> uh, out of curiosity, I uh, asked what was the meaning of a dear bomb. Mm -hmm. He told me that I'm somebody that believes in justice. Mm -hmm. that I want things to be done equal mm. to everybody. I'm uh, up to now, mm. anytime that man sees me, he calls me a dear boy. <laughs> yes. But that apart, mm. as I started growing older, mm. I started making a comparative analysis of the governments who were produced in Nigeria. Mm. And uh, I saw the quick, I saw the sources, the Buhari region recorded in such a short time. Mm. 
So that got me in there to him. Oh. And uh, especially in Benue State, where I come from, oh. there were some progressive measures. Oh. There were a lot of things that were done by the then military governor, oh. Brigadier John Atonpura. Oh. It is on record. He saved a lot of money for Benue State government, oh. and the era of condominium was gone. And you know, Buhari's government was short-lived. Yes. So when IBB took over, mm. by then I started getting more matured. Mm -hmm. I started comparing his government with the previous one. Mm. And in the course of doing that, at a very tender age, I became a member of Campaign for Democracy. I was a staunch supporter of Campaign for Democracy. And one of our misgivings with the military government was the annulment of June 12, which we saw as illegal, undemocratic, and a, a disservice to the, the Nigerian people. And I became a member of Campaign for Democracy. So when democracy came back in 1999, Obasanjo became the president. And some of us saw so many faults in his style of governance. Because during his government, there were a lot of things which we saw as abnormal. As a political scientist, I saw his interference in the activities of the National Assembly as not right. I saw his imposition where a governor would be removed. A lot of things were not, uh, done so undemocratic. And uh, see what happened in Zakibian. See what happened in Odi. There were a lot of things that were going so undemocratic. So as a political science student and somebody who believes in true democracy, when I had, I initially started working with Abaka Remy. I was the coordinator of a youth awareness group for Remy 2003. And that was a non-partisan group that wanted Remy to take over from Obasanjo and Joe as the president. So I was a Benue State coordinator. But unfortunately, when Remy could not get the ticket of PDP, you know, in Nigeria, it's very, very difficult for you to unseat yeah, an, an incumbent president, especially at a primary election level. So when Remy couldn't get the PDP primaries in 2000, I switched over to join PNB. And we have been together since then. We saw him as somebody who will come and correct the ease, the perceived ease that we saw being perpetrated by the, by the then government in power. So that triggered me to join the Bahari organization. And in 2003, I was deeply involved in it. 2007, I was the national organizing secretary of the youth wing of the, the Bahari organization. 2011, I was a national organizing secretary of CPC. I was the first national organizing secretary. And 2015, I was, I served in the media and communication directorate. And in the last election, I was in the contact and mobilization. So all this why I have, I have been very, very close to the to PNB and close to him, I discovered a lot about him more than I knew. He was somebody, he's somebody that is not crazy about weight acquisition. And, uh, and uh, he was a very humble person who saw you the way you are. But as of then, he didn't care to know where you come from. As long as you are right, you are prudent, you are upright, you are somebody, you are a go-getter. He does not care where you come from. There's a particular statement he always told me. He said, Richard, a good name. He calls me the rich. Say, the rich, where have you killed the poor? <laughs> there is something I would like you to know as a young man. I see you as somebody who is interested in politics. And uh, I see you as a very knowledgeable young man. I want you to know that a good name is better than riches. So whatever you are doing on it, be fully aware that there's a day is coming that between you and your God, you account for everything you have done.
between you and your God. Nobody will be there with you. It will just be you and God. So a good name is better than bad riches. So I learned such things from him, and it it has uh, it it has changed my philosophy of life. Mm. So Buddhism, to the best of my understanding, is doing 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 things in the right way. Okay. Uh, doing things in the right way, correcting the ills in the society. Yes. Changing the narratives, uh, just like it is with the the concept now. Uh, it's an idea of um, moving political economy away from the control of what he called the parasitic elite. Now, this is has translated to what we are seeing in terms of um, uh, his direct dealing with the Nigerian populace. Um, but one aspect of it, uh, the kind of economic reforms is bringing. Some will say uh, a cake, and are pushing the poor, you know, on the age, uh, to the age rather. Um, why? I mean, how are you looking at this um, uh, um, concern now? Because yes, things. I, I mean, he is trying to change the way we do things. He's trying to uh, to see that the the country is brought back to the path of progressive uh, development and so on. But the poor people are, are, are at the receiving end. I want you to appreciate, mm. I want you to, 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 to speak further. Mm. What are the economic reforms mm. that are against the masses? I want to know that before I will, I will elaborate more. Well, take for instance, we're talking about, um, you know, before he came on board, he has talked severely about the need to have to even reduce the price, uh, the pump price of trade oil, for instance. And then, but when, when he came on board, Nigerians saw a different thing. It's it risen instead of, of declining or, or reducing. Again, before he came, Nigerians, you know, that has been the perception among Nigerians. Uh, food is relatively cheap. Rice was sold at 8,000 thereabout. Today, we're talking about 20,000 thereabout. So, so some of this economics, uh, Nigerians believe, uh, pushing them on the age. Uh, how are you looking at that? Well, mm -hmm. let me start asking the first question you asked. Mm -hmm. He said he's going to chase the parasites away. Mm -hmm. from the national economy. Mm -hmm. I think what he means, you see, before now, people saw government patronage as their bet right. Mm. There are some people who mm. feel they call it national kick that mm. should be shared mm. by a privileged few. That has always been Buhari's worry. Mm. To the best of my understanding, he means that looting embezzling public funds will not be business as usual. That was why he said that. And to an extent, mm -hmm. he has tried. But uh, happy that the back of your mind, there is no human being expected. And Buhari is also a human being. Mm -hmm. So don't expect, every don't expect him to be perfect. Mm -hmm. There is no human being that is perfect. So mm -hmm. there may be a, 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 a few lapses, mm -hmm. you see, as a human being, is expected mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. But he has done very well in that. You see, before now, people saw government patronage as their bed right. Mm -hmm. If some people, they don't work, they just sit, they expect mm -hmm. public funds to be given to them periodically, annually, or monthly. Mm -hmm. And when he came, he stopped that. He came, he stopped that. Let's take for example, I work with, with the government. I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a member of two boards. Yes. I'm a member of a governing council mm. of Federal University of Tokyo, mm. and I represent North Central mm. in the Universal Basic Education Commission. Mm. So I'm telling you from my experience mm. that this TSA, mm. this TSA has changed a lot of things. Mm. Before you cut away with public funds, mm. there are a lot of procedures, mm. and it is because of the introduction of this TSA mm. which has made that impossible. Mm. And who brought TSA? Mm. It's, it's PMB. That well, who, who implemented that? Perhaps uh, because the PDP will tell you that it, it is that. their concept. Anyway. I'm coming to that. There are these insinuations that it was good luck that initiated it. Mm -hmm. But PMB implemented. Mm. So again, the good luck was the one that initiated it. Mm. On records, it is clearly seen that the TSA stuff was, uh, was brought by the President Muhammad Buhari. Mm -hmm. And it has greatly, it has taught people from... Uh, 
siphoning public funds, mm. which uh, was a very common practice in the past. Yeah, has it really stopped? Because even the PMB uh, at some point admit that uh, stealing is still going on, even in this administration. That one is only, it's sure, it's sure. You know, Nigerians are Nigerians. Mm. Nigerians are Nigerians. Mm. No matter what you do, mm. they still find ways. Talking, of, uh, yeah, talking about blocking leakages. Today we are faced with, uh, you know, a number of... Uh, uh, startling revelations regarding how money is were taken away um, by the government. Yes, Some have been that. accused of a, a high, high profile corruption and so on, including his uh, very close, closest ally, you know, talking about a former SGF and so on. So, what, what changed really? Has there any change? In terms I know of that. Now, I think a few people have been handpicked <laughs> of, having one, uh, have, of having engaged mm -hmm. in one or two corrupt practices. But Previously, it was a very common thing. And you know, this is a gradual process. It is not everybody, I can say that categorically, it is not everybody in government that shares the same principles with PMB. You know, some people can make a lot of noise, they can speak heaven and earth, but when, you get the power, when they get to, uh, to, to power, when they occupy any office, they do the reverse. I know PMB cannot be everywhere. I'm quite aware that a lot of uh, government functionaries have been accused of one or two corrupt practices. Mm. But you know, this is a gradual process. Mm. You know, the, this thing has been happening for a very long time. Mm. I know it is not easy for that thing to be changed overnight. Mm. I know Nigerians are very impatient. Mm. That is why some of us, even though there are one or two things we may disagree over about the present administration, mm. but I always tell Nigerians mm. to be very patient with PMB because as somebody I have worked very, very close with mm. because we had a father and son relationship. Mm -hmm. I know that he's somebody that means very well for Nigeria. Mm. Well, okay, meaning very well for Nigeria. Uh, but then the reality on the ground seems not to be um, palatable, you know, in terms of delivering or implementing some of his policies, his ideology towards a, a better Nigeria. Uh, right from the onset, some felt, you know, the takeoff was, was not even smooth because. Uh, President Muhammad Buhari has, I mean, uh, w was interested in having a government and a people around him that are corrupt free. But he couldn't do it alone. Uh, haven't tried first, second term, third time uh, without success. He has to bring some people on board. And some people of questionable characters, you know, including those that were accused of corruption and so on and so forth. Um, well, they help support him. To, to emerge as, as, as president in 2015. Even as we speak, there has been a lot of concerns regarding the number of people who have been appointed by President Muhammad Buhari into the present cabinet. Some were said to have, you know, questions to answer. Um, how do you think he can change the situation or change the narrative or put Nigeria on that path of sustainable growth with these kind of elements around? My candid opinion is this. Mm. If somebody has any corrupt case, mm. if somebody has one case or the other, mm. but, is, but happens to be in government, mm. the case should still continue. Okay. For example, I received a lot of calls from friends across mm. the Federation. Mm. They pointed out a few ministers, mm. a few ministerial nominees mm. that had cases mm. with the AFCC would have been appointed by PMB. Mm. I said, I said, well, if he feels he will work with them, mm. good and fine. Mm. But even though, I know very well that you can't be pronounced guilty until, until it is done by a competent court of law. Mm. Even though there are ministers, there are cases you continue mm. and PMB should not interfere. Mm. If the cases continue mm. and finally they have been proven guilty, mm. they should face the law. Joshua Dariye mm. was a PDP mm. for a long time ago. Though he, when, when he came to PDP, mm. there were insinuations mm. that he has done that to save his neck. Mm. To APC, rather. Uh, to APC. Yeah. What do you see now? Mm. Julie Nyame, mm. although he was in PDP, mm. but what do you see now? Mm. So I believe... <laughs> I but isn't that, you know, a direct... Um, um, I mean, because... Even you, the leader of your party at some point did mention that 
whoever you know joined the APC has since are forgiven. So how do you reconcile these issues? Yeah, he's a leader of my party, but is he is he a court judge? Is he the president? He's just a leader of PDP. He has no uh, APC. AP, sorry, APC. <laughs> right. He has no direct involvement in the trial of any corrupt official. Mm. And he has no direct involvement mm. in the running of the day-to-day -day activities mm. of this administration. So, so I, believe, I believe it's a political statement, and that, 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 that is his opinion. Mm. I don't believe we should, form, we should use that as the basis of a discussion, because he has no direct link mm. with any court or the daily running of the administration. So to me, let's not use that. That, that was his opinion. Okay, even though he's the party um, uh, the chairman at the national level. Anyway, okay. Let's look at the, uh, the, the issues, you know, let's put them in perspective. The aim of uh, Buhari government, or part of his ideology, is to um, come up with policies that will reward the working class, you know, people who are productive. Uh, he has said that time without number. Uh, part of the policies he's implementing today are geared towards empowering the less privileged. Now, we've seen the level of transformation that is going on in the agricultural sector, especially with the Anko Borrower uh, Initiative. Now farmers are becoming rich and so on and so forth. Um, the recent closure of the border was said to have been done, you know, specifically to achieve certain objectives. Now protect the local production of rice and all of that. These are perhaps some would say policies that are aimed at, uh, at uh, you know, uh, enhancing the well-being of, of the common man. But at the same time, just like I said earlier on, uh, let's take for example the 2020 budget. Um, part of the revenue projection was to come up with VAT, that is the value added task, mm -hmm. you know, increase it from 5% to 7.5% thereabout. Now, a lot of people believe that um, that in itself is not going to help the masses because uh, most of the items, even though there are some items that were excluded, uh, it, the, the fallout will still come back to the ordinary people. Even the rice, uh, the, the ban on the on the importation or expo I mean importation of rice that we're talking about today, the masses are the ones feeling it. Um, the price has risen. Even the local product, the local uh, rice that we're talking about, has has, has uh, increased. When coming up with these policies, is President Muhammadu Buhari looking at the ripple effects, and what palliatives is he coming up with? Well, let me start with what you you. You said first. Mm -hmm. You see, to show you, to agree with you, mm. that most of his policies are targeted at the masses. Mm. I will give an example. If you say this empower mm. and food vendor stuff, mm. they have seriously the social investment intervention. Yes, yes. the social uh, social. <coughs> mm. It has seriously mm. impacted. If, if you go to the grassroots, if you go to, to villages, I will give an example in Benue State. When we sat and uh, did our calculation mm. before the general election, we were thinking PMB might not, might not, might not win Benue State outrightly. We were mm. thinking he would get 25%, mm. but he, he was not going to win. Mm. Our anger was the, the disagreement between the, the two people and the federal government. Mm. Because of what they, 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 the the robbers who were parading themselves as felony as men, what they were doing, mm. people thought Buhari being a felony man, mm. people will reject him in Benue State. That was the belief. Mm -hmm. But during the election, mm. if you see the massive votes, the massive turnout, people who voted for PNB in Benue mm. had no bad what we had anticipated. And why did that happen? When I was interacting with people a few days to the election, mm. some of them told me that the empower mm. is very, very effective. Mm. The food vendor, uh, most of them mm. were food vendors. Mm. And uh, seriously, it, it is helping them mm. to feed their families, mm. to send their kids to school, to do some businesses that will improve their living. Mm. So they are not sure if, if a team comes back, and the, <laughs> the, the, the team will continue. Oh. So that sole reason mm. made Buhari to record a very good uh, despite out, the, out, out in Benue. Despite the established narrative. Yes. Mm. And uh, mm. the, 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 the difference between APC and PDP in Benue State, mm. uh, it, it was just 7,000 votes. Mm. Now we believed that if some things mm. were not done, 
Kebula Uo, Bernard State. What are those things anyway? Uh, <laughs> I'm not going uh, into that. <laughs> I'm not going into that. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. <laughs> yes. Uh, people voted for him because of this uh, mm. food vendor and social investment program. Mm. It seriously made the masses to vote for him. Mm. Uh, but it's because most of them have benefited from that. Even in Benue, where many people saw mm. the people as his enemies. Mm. Say what? Say, say, say the vote you got. Mm. So I just want to let you know that mm. the masses are benefiting. Mm. And you see, when you ban the importation of agriculture, mm. uh, 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 of rice, right. and other things, it is to boost the local production. Mm -hmm. And farmers are seriously making it. Mm. Farmers are seriously making it. Mm. But aren't they also shortchanging Nigerians if it is done to protect them? And then they also allow the, the prices to go up instead of you know, bringing it down it, so that they appreciate what the government is doing. It is now rising. Why is the government not talking to these farmers? Why is it not regulating the price hike? I believe we surely get there. Nothing good comes easy. Mm. Um, we surely get there. Where there, are, there are so many things mm. that, that, that are happening. Okay. But I'm sure, mm. <laughs> just take it. We surely get there. We surely get there. Okay, we'll get there. But then we have few, I mean, years, you know, to, to, to deliver on all of these expectations of Nigerians. Mm. Um, just like you rightly put, you know, Nigerians have a lot of expectations on President Muhammad Buhari. And he cannot afford, you know, to let them down. I'm sure he's very much concerned about the legacies he's going to leave for Nigerians after eight years of surgeon. He has been looking for it. Nigerians have been enough, have been patient with him. You know, they believe in his administration despite all odds. They still gave him the mandate 2019. How concerned are you that President Muhammad Buhari should be able to take Nigeria out of the woods? So my folks are so worried. Are so worried, even though we do, we do, we do, we do, we're not having executive positions in government, but we're worried for our personal, mm. for, 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 for our future too. Mm -hmm. Because I know everybody knows me with Buhari. Those of us that I have, mm. have, yes. been, have been associated with him, mm. if you first deliver, mm. <laughs> how, would you, how would you face? Uh, we're the ones mm. who will be at the receiving end. How would you face your elected? Listen, because for the past years, we have been championing and preaching to Nigeria on why he should be elected. Mm. But you see, I'm sure mm. that it's still time. Mm. I will give an example. Mm -hmm. He has assembled a very good number of qualitative people mm. as his ministers. Mm -hmm. He has brought people who are very experienced, who are very qualified as ministers. Mm. So I believe something can be done mm. within this time. I will give you an example. How many years did Shagari serve as president? Mm. Four years. Mm. I'm telling you this as a political scientist. I'm not talking to manipulate figures, but I'm telling you as a political scientist. Mm. Shagari ruled Nigeria only for four years, but he did very well. Mm. Every state you go to, most of the states, most of the states you go to, mm. the best things in these states were done by governors under Shagari. In my, in my state, mm. Benue state, mm. no governor has done what Governor Apoya could did. Mm. How long did they serve? Mm. Just for four years. Mm. So uh, I, I believe... But is it what we're seeing today? I, I believe it's the president... Uh, the proactive. governor's on the same page with the president because... <laughs> let's uh, the narrative has let's assume, let's mm. assume mm. that his first time... Mm. He didn't act fast, as many people complained, mm. that they were even calling him Baba Goslo. Baba Goslo. <laughs> but let's take it that now, the reverse will be the case. Mm. And you, and you think there will be magic that can be done within two, three years? But I have to say that uh, in, the, in Shagari's government, mm. within four years, mm. the, the, the governors did a lot of things. Was there any magic? It's just the way. Mm. If you decide, uh, let me do this, you will do. Beca but, because mm. it, it's a wish. If you go, if, if you check and see those who are not having the same uh, drive you have, mm. if you check the bad eggs in your government mm. and, and get rid of them, mm. okay. you go away. Okay, we hope that will be done. <laughs> in, in, in the we'll yes. <laughs> okay, in case you're just joining us, it's dialogue. And this morning, I've been dialoguing with uh, Comrade Richard Teso Nenga. Uh, he is a political scientist and a Kobo Harist. You know, from his uh, perspective, you know that he has been with this ideology called Buharism for <laughs> quite some time. Okay, we'll take a short break. Uh, just like I said, uh, our talking point today is PMB's government and the quest for progressive development. Please don't go away. We'll be back in a short while.
from food. Jennifer, I get fresh for wine for you. No, my mother was here at the grouse. Sure. Jemba, come play after now. Are they come? Are they come? Did they come? I be they go. Jemba, Jemba. No wonder when I the greet you, no great answer me well. You know, get generator now. How does your television come to work? I get solar panel for my roof when they collect sun, turn them to electricity, come transfer them to this box so you they see so. Now in the power everything, even say. Now me fix everything from up to down. You know how that all. This one now gem ballistic. I they tell you. Um, let you tell me more. Okay for that person. For us, go arrange your own start time solar home system. Meet yourself, follow, enjoy digital life. Thank you for staying with us. Uh, it's still dialogue, and of course this morning, I've been dialoguing with Kamala Richard Teso Nenga, a political scientist and a co-buharist. Together, we'll be looking at the PMB's government and the quest for progressive development. Uh, just b before we went on that break, uh, uh, Teso uh, was actually uh, making a comparison, you know, <laughs> between the present administration and the uh, Shagari late administration. He was talking about a short time uh, late president, uh, had a, uh, late president uh, Shagari was able to make um, a very significant impact in the governance of Nigeria. But, uh, comrade, if those were the postulations and that, that was the, 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 the scorecard of, of, of that uh, administration, why the intervention? Because some will tell you it is the same President Muhammad Buhari that intervened and toppled that government. Why, how can you reconcile these facts? Well, this is a very critical issue. Mm. I want to explain myself on it. Mm. What made me to raise that? that? Mm. You said Buhari has a limited time mm. to do that. Yes. Because we have three and a half years mm. left. Left. Mm. That was why I brought that. Uh, okay. I say Shagari's government did only four years, mm. but he did a lot. Across the federation, you see this Shagari housing estate. Mm. He said his, go his government, he was directly implementing the manifesto of MPN, mm. on whose platform he was elected. Mm. Green Revolution mm. was part of MPN manifesto. Yes. It was implemented even in some non mm. non MPN state. non MPN state. Because I was discussing with a friend some few days ago, mm. and we had an argument. He told me that mm. Governor Ambrose Ali. Mm. of uh, Benin State mm. also did some things that were similar mm. to the, that of Green Revolution. Well, I don't know how to use that, but uh, as a journalist, mm. I challenge you to do your findings. <laughs> okay. And uh, this Shagari Locust mm. were built across the whole Federation. Right. And education was part of the NPA Manifesto. Mm. And uh, he built some states that have no mm. federal institutions, the way that they were brought, mm. and so many things. Mm. Uh, go, go down to the states. Mm. Everything Every state you go to, mo not every state, most of the states you go to, mm. the best things in these states were done by governors on the Shagari, and they ruled only for four years. Mm. That, that was why uh, I said that mm. even though Buhari has still had years, mm. if he's proactive, mm. if there is close monitoring of public mm. appointees. Just like you have now, the, what, what, they, what do they call it? Uh, the, the new mechanism to measure their performances, the four performance indicators uh, are measured. And let me... Add, add something to that mm. because I believe this is something somebody can one day give reference to. Mm. I say Shagari's government is, was good mm -hmm. because if you see during his government, mm. the theory of uh, separation of powers mm. was in full swing. 
throughout the Chinese government, yes. Joseph Weiss was a Senate president mm. throughout. And uh, Adrian Umezeuke mm. was a speaker, House of Reps, until he was replaced by Benjamin Shah in 1983. Mm. Chagrin never used Ghana Must Go mm. to change the House leadership. Mm. He attended MPN meetings. As a member, who sit as a member of the party. Yeah, sometimes he's even invited the, by the party chairman. And the national chairman, because of the, like Inloe, yeah. would preside, would preside over, over mm -hmm. the meeting. So he, mm -hmm. he, he was very democratic. Mm -hmm. He was very democratic. Mm -hmm. He was better than the governments that came after him, okay. the civilian governments that came after him. Mm -hmm. That was why mm -hmm. I brought that. Yeah. that oh, but the question is, why the, why the intervention now? Well, you see, just take time and study it yourself. Mm -hmm. Why was Agari, his government toppled? Mm -hmm. You can say ask the question that why was Boris government toppled? Because uh, mm. ask why was Boris government toppled? Mm. But you need to because answer the first question. Eh? When he came, mm. when he came, mm. he was fighting corruption mm. diligently. Even though there were a lot of uh, human rights abuse, mm -hmm. because you can't jail mm. somebody for hundred years, mm. or you can't jail somebody for two hundred years, mm. that was a that was a bit harsh. Mm. But the gospel truth is, he was fighting corruption very well. Mm. So some people. Mm. Who claimed, mm. who claimed mm. that Shagari's government was mm. corrupt, mm. still ganged up mm. and took over his government again. Mm -hmm. uh, but I challenge, I, I challenge you to do the research yourself. I don't want to speak for that. I want, I, well, I, yeah, he, he actually said that. I uh, think uh, that part of the reasons he gave for the intervention was that uh, there is a lot of corruption going on in the system then, and there is need to cleanse it. Well, um, he was really concerned about that because when he came on board you know, during the military uh, uh, arrangement, he made efforts you know, to recover funds that were taken, uh, you know, uh, um, to recover assets that were taken and all of that. Um, he said you know, in one of his, uh, his interviews that he was worried because after his government was toppled, those things he was, able, was trying to recover, you know, to return back to the treasury were giving back to those, the beneficiaries, so to speak. Now, and this is the reason why um, I would ask you this question, because in a democratic process, um, President Muhammadu Buhari is still fighting corruption. Uh, he is still concerned, you know, very strongly about the need to recover those looted funds, mm -hmm. the looted assets, uh, you know, and, and bring them back to the treasury. But there are limitations. Um, it, it wasn't the way it used to be, even though he used um, some wisdom now to send a bill to the National Assembly to talk about, you know, asset recovery and how it can be, uh, I mean, infused into the, 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 the Treasury and all of that. The issue of asset for future also came to bear and all of that. So how are you looking at the impediments? Because whatever President Muhammad Wari wants to do and uh, the style he adopted during the military era might not work in this democratic uh, system. Is it an impediment? Is it well, slowing down, you know, the yes, deliverables? Yes, yes. You see, the major obstacle, most of uh, one of the major things that hindered mm -hmm. the smooth takeoff of Harris government mm -hmm. in his first term mm -hmm. was uh, his problem with the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. The National Assembly was not on the same page mm -hmm. with the villa, with the with the executive. Mm -hmm. They were they were they were they were, they, 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 were, they were working a cat and dog. Mm. I know before, before before you make any tremendous success mm. in any civilian administration, mm. you need maximum support of the National Assembly, mm. and that was lacking in Buhari's first term. Mm. And and in, in this second term, mm. it is clearly seen, it is clearly seen that he's on the same page with the National Assembly. Mm. That is why I'm so uh, optimistic. That is why I'm, I'm so sure mm. that it won't be like the first. Uh, ten. Mm. And you mean the, the, the deliverables will be fast track now that there is a, a harmony between the two arms of government. But beyond that, some are looking at the policies. Are they really sustainable? Uh, I mean, because President Muhammad Buhari has limitation in terms of uh, the tenure he, ha mm. he has. And he wants to take Nigeria to a certain level. Yes. Now, providing or building stronger institutions that will help realize some of this objective is critical. Uh, that is even after 2023. How are you looking at the, I mean, the, the structures, the, the institutional framework that is being put in place to guarantee sustainability of this uh, progress, you know? Well, you keep on giving emphasis on that. And let me, mm. Buhari's policies 
can be sustained. Can be sustained. It mm -hmm. depends on him. Mm -hmm. You know, go governor is about continuity. Mm -hmm. Governor is about continuity. Having ruled Nigeria for eight years, mm -hmm. by God's grace, he's going to, he's going to rule Nigeria for eight years because he has gotten a new mandate. Mm -hmm. If he prepares somebody, mm -hmm. if he prepares somebody to succeed him, mm -hmm. and is somebody that shares the same ideologies with him. These things, these things can be sustained. But he doesn't seem to be doing that. In fact, he came out categorically to say that he's not supporting anybody. Even though some will say also it's a political statement because <laughs> he wouldn't want to be distracted. You may not know. Because anybody mm. who wants his, his legacies to be maintained can't say that. Mm. He, he may not come out to say it, but <laughs> because, because I know very well, yeah. if Buhari is leaving office, he wouldn't want his party to be in shambles. But I that, know that very but, well. But, but those are the, 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 the signs now. Some are beginning to see that the party may likely disintegrate even before 2023. There are people who believe that the way and manner, you know, the leadership of the party is going, the party may go into extinction before 2023. Isn't that a serious concern? It's a serious concern. Yeah. Is, is, the PDP, is the PDP stable either? Because I saw the former vice president, good luck, Jonathan, mm. came out one day to former say... Former president. Former president, good luck, Jonathan, mm. came out to say... He will do whatever at his disposal mm. to make sure that Aibo Man is elected president in 2023. Mm. He said that, and I saw Baba Edwin Clark mm -hmm. also came out to say that. Mm. But in my personal interaction with some of the uh, PDP chieftains, you know, I have a lot of friends there mm -hmm. that they are telling me mm. that it's going to be a different boy game. Okay. That they are thinking of giving the power somewhere else. Mm. I have been discussing with higher ranking PDP. Mm. PDP people, and that's what they've been telling me. So, mm. how are you sure PDP is, is not on the same track? Mm -hmm. uh, but, but then, you should be concerned about your party. Yes. You're talking about uh, sustainability, mm. uh, continuity. And even before, at the moment that we're talking, there is a lot of division in the party. Yes. Uh, especially along that 2023 arrangement. Now, some are beginning to talk about retention of power, others felt it has to rotate and all of that. So this is also creating a lot of problems. But you see, this has always been a problem with Nigerians. Mm. Because I feel in discussing this power of a team, mm. we should look at competence. Mm. We should look at somebody who will take us to the right track, who will take us mm. to the promised land. Mm. Somebody who will deliver, who will make a flanny man, a Yoruba man, a Ibo man, a TV man, a Ijo man, to feed an I'm a Nigerian. We shouldn't be giving much attention mm -hmm. to where somebody comes from. But unfortunately, it has been deeply rooted in the minds of Nigerians, and you can't do away with it. Mm -hmm. So, I think, before we get to 2023, mm -hmm. it, will, it, it will be clear mm -hmm. who is going to succeed Buhari. Okay. Because I know very well, mm -hmm. you can't avoid this in politics. Mm. I'm very much of Shagari's government here. Mm. You know that before the end of his, tenure, his first term in 1983, mm. APN was in shambles. Mm. But it, it, was, it, 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 it was resolved mm. before the 83 election. Look at the person just time. Mm. Before he finished his second term, mm -hmm. before he finished, he finished his first term, mm. he had issues with the National Assembly and uh, with, the, with the party. Mm. That he was sacking senior presidents left and right. He was removing national chairman at WE. Mm -hmm. But before the 2003, mm -hmm. it, was, it was resolved. Even though we know what went up, uh, mm -hmm. we know what went on, that he got back. Mm -hmm. When he came back, he started his third term of a thing. Mm -hmm. The party got so divided. Mm -hmm. I know some PDP governors, mm -hmm. like George Akumi of Benue State, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Joshua Deriye of Batu State, they came out publicly mm -hmm. to oppose third term, even though they were PDP governors. They came out in strong terms mm. and opposed mm. the third term of mm. the thing. Mm. And when it was glaring that Obasanjo was not going to make it, mm -hmm. he, uh, he changed his steps. Mm. And when the, when the National Assembly finally threw, threw mm. it out, mm. within a short time, they came back, reorganized the party, mm. and Yaradua was elected as the president. Okay, okay. In specific terms, you know, in 30 seconds, uh, uh, there about, tell Nigerians. Where is President Muhammadu Buhari wanting to see Nigeria before he leaves office? And what are those specific interventions have made that are impacted positively on the life of Nigerians? Well, 
during the campaigns, mm. his promises to Nigerians were he, would, he want to get a free, corrupt country. Uh, are we there? Well, we're almost there. Some people have been, have been sent to jail, and that, uh, that will serve as a deterrent to others. Okay, next one. Insecurity. Mm. During good last time, I will better up. There were bomb blasts everywhere mm. in, in Abuja. Boko Haram was everywhere. Mm. Is that happening now? Even though, like Oliver Twist, mm. we still expect more from him. But it, it, it is better than it was before. Mm. I don't believe in this blame game. Mm. PDP, we believe that PDP failed. That was why Bohari was brought. Mm -hmm. So in doing these things, we shouldn't be said that PDP never did this. PDP never did this. Let's do what we're supposed to do. And the, la the last one, <laughs> economy. Yeah. Are we better off? Well, we're, we're, we're not better off. We're not better off. Mm -hmm. But with the economic thing he has just put in place, mm -hmm. we have people like Charles Oludo mm -hmm. and some renowned economists mm -hmm. in the economic team. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm quite sure mm -hmm. that with the caliber of people he has brought on board now, mm -hmm. he's going to do better in the aspect of the economy. Thank you very much. On that optimistic note, we have to come to the end of the discussion <laughs> with uh, Comrade Richard Teso Nenga. Uh, political scientist and a core Buharist. Buharism is his political ideology. <laughs> Thank you very much for talking to us. You're welcome. Yes, on mm -hmm. his behalf and the uh, technical crew here, I am mm -hmm. Shafiul Suleiman. Uh, do stay tuned for the rest of our programming. Good morning. <laughs>